Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I've gotten a lot of requests from anglers out there that want me to do a retrieval video on this guy right here, the hover rig. Uh, and I'm here to tell you that there is no wrong way to fish this. The more I fish it and the more it becomes one of the staples in my arsenal, I find that there's no wrong way to fish it. It catches fish almost everywhere you go. There's very few baits that you can rig on this that do not have better action or do not perform better than when they're rigged on a different bait. So I'm really truly a uh, falling in love with this bait. I mean, I realize that I'm the one that designed it, but the more I use it, the more it becomes a go-to for me. But I do find that there's some retrieves that can definitely increase the number of bites that you get. So I wanna walk you through these different retrieves. I wanna show you why this bait will will perform so well and why these specific retrieves actually will help you enhance the action of the plastic that you're choosing now before i take you down to the water and show you the retrieves i do want to just point out what has become all, uh, one of my mainstays in terms of the way i rig it the arsenal that i use uh, specifically here i've got this is a seven foot to a seven foot three medium light so this rod is specifically a seven footer but I actually add several inches to it when I build it. So it's actually a 7-2 blank. Uh, but then I also really like throwing it on a 7-3 blank. If you build your own rods, it's the MX, uh, MHX NSJ871. Uh, this happens to be the 841. But again, like I said, I add a couple inches to it when I build it. But I generally use it on 10 pound this is Berkley X9 braided line, high-vis braided line, because I do want to be able to see my line move when the bait's falling. A lot of times, one of the keys to this bait is to let it fall on slack line. So it's critical to be able to watch your line, and the high-vis Berkley X9 uh, braid allows me to do that. And then I tie it to anywhere from a 6 to a 10-pound fluorocarbon leader. I just use Berkley 100% fluorocarbon. Generally speaking, I use a 10 pound if I'm fishing something like the river, or a 10 foot leader if I'm using something like the fishing the river here, which is a little bit dirtier. 10 pound, 10 foot leader. If I'm fishing gin clear water, I go with a leader up to 20 feet long of six pound fluorocarbon. Uh, and then I just generally go with a very high quality spinning reel because I do like to have a good uh, gear, a uh, good drag system built in this is the mg extreme by abu garcia they've since discontinued it but it's one of my favorite spinning reels and when you're talking about a, a hook that's laser sharp you really don't need to have a super stout rod now i will tell you it comes standard with that weed guard i would be willing to bet you 80 percent of the time i bend this back and forth to get it to snap off right at the lead and that's specifically because there's no reason to have it on there if I'm just fishing open water. Now, if I'm fishing around laydowns or I'm skipping docks, maybe at that point I'll leave the weed guard on. We just felt like we would give the angler the opportunity to fish it weedless or not weedless. In the future, there, we very well may come out with just a non-weed guard version. Uh, but it's a simple setup. But let's go down to the water. Let me show you how to work this bait some of my favorite retrieves because it is a very easy bait to use you're really allowing the the hook within the bait to impart the action so you don't want to overwork it but you definitely uh can enhance the action of it with the with the right retrieve so i'm going to take you down there we'll probably get some people who comment on the video that i didn't catch anything while i was down there but maybe i will you know i've done probably 15 of these videos and i have yet to catch one well demonstrating the retrieves maybe today will be the day we shall see but let's get down to the water all right so we are down here at the water i've got the jackal rhythm wag a four and a half incher rigged on the 364 ounce hover rig uh one of my favorite setups right here and i'm gonna show you how i like to fish this the first the first cast or the first retrieve that i like to do is very much how i would fish a ned rig so i'm literally just throwing it out there I engage the reel and I let that bait fall. And I'm watching for two things. I'm watching my line to see if I get a bite and I'm watching to see if my bait hits the bottom. When it hits the bottom, your line will just go slack. It dropped right there. When it does that, 
I reel up a little and I give it a couple of wrist pops, almost like you're snapping a tube, but not super hard. And the reason I do that is the bait will shoot side to side. Now with that 90 degree jig hook, it literally skitters versus coming vertical. It almost rides the bottom. Looks very much like a dying bait fish, looks very much like a crayfish that's just skittering around the bottom. So I'm just gonna pop it back to the boat. Now I generally don't fish it all the way back to the boat when I'm doing this. A lot of times I'll fish it about halfway back and then I'll make a new cast and throw it out. It's This is how I really like to fish it. If I'm fishing big flats, maybe I'm going down the bank and I'm fishing some docks. Just generally I'm fishing more of a target versus just trying to cover a ton of water. But all it is, you let the bait hit the bottom. Once it's on the bottom, you see your line drop. You give it a couple of snaps and you're watching your line the entire time looking to see if a fish bites it or looking to see if your bait hits the bottom. If it hits the bottom, you pop it a couple of more times and you're good to go. So that's the first retrieval style. I would say I fish it the majority of the time, especially if I'm on shallower water. That's how I'm going about fishing the hover rig. But that's the first of three retrieves. All right, so the second retrieve, I had to wait for a double 250 pontoon to go by, is more of what you would consider straight hover strolling. You let it go out, you get it down to the point where you want it in the water column, and then it's just a slow retrieve with like little pops. You're basically trying to keep your bait suspended in the water column, and all it's doing is almost like walking the dog. You get a, an erratic movement out of it because that little pop, every time you pop it, your bait goes side to side. It really leads to some good motion, and it's a great way to draw fish up off the bottom. Sometimes I'll stop it and then just start popping again, but it's a ton of little movements, very, very slow retrieval. It's similar a lot of times to how you would fish, say, a, uh, a small swim bait where you're really trying to get that bait to suspend. But instead of just a straight retrieve, what you're really doing is you're popping the tip of your rod. You're shaking the tip of your rod to really keep a little bit of movement. So I'll do it again. I'll throw it out there. I'm going to let it go down a couple of feet. And then I'm just very little shakes, very slow retrieval. And generally what happens when you get a bite is your line will just tighten up. But really, I'm just making that bait dart back and forth. It's just walking the dog, it's shooting back and forth. Every little movement of your rod, every little pop is getting that bait to shoot all over the place. And what we're finding across the country is it's very, very difficult for fish to turn this down. It draws the fish up off the bottom. It works in both dirty water, it works in gin clear water. Uh, it's an excellent, excellent way to fish a hover rig. It is pretty much the true hover strolling technique where you're fishing your bait for uh, suspended in the water column, getting fish to come up to it. The third way that I like to fish it is more of a tight line retrieve. I throw it out, engage the reel, keep my rod tip up pointed in the air, and I'm letting that bait pendulum down to the bottom. If I want it to hit the bottom, that's fine, but then I'll slow retrieve it, get it to rise back up, and then I'm just letting it pendulum back down. And in some instances, if I'm fishing near the bottom, I want it to hit the bottom. If I'm fishing suspended fish, maybe I want my bait to stay in 15 feet of water over 30. I'll let it pendulum for a few seconds, reel it up a little bit, and let it pendulum. Now in some instances, I do shake it as well while it's pendulum. And that allows you to get some additional motion, some side to side movement as your bait is slowly pendulum. But I do not retrieve my reel when I do that. That's just something that I'm doing to try to impart a little bit of action as it's slowly falling. It really gives it more of that dying fish appearance versus an active, lively, single bait fish that's an easy target. But those are the three ways that I really like to fish this technique. Uh, all three of them produce extremely, extremely well. It's a technique that not only works for largemouth, spotted bass, smallmouth, but what we are finding is it works so well for walleye, for crappie, all different species. We've now got on the Core Tackle website as well as uh, uh, sending out a bunch of new sizes to places like Tackle Warehouse and Baitworks and a bunch of other bait shops. So if you're looking for some of these, you can go to coretackle.com, 
or you can go check out the website, uh, you know, Tackle Warehouse or some of your local dealers as well. But these are the ways that I like to fish, the hover rig. I'm gonna see if I can catch a fish for you. I'm gonna get back to fishing. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone.